shall see. come before the Lord we say thank you singing with all our hearts we say thank you bowing down in God's holy presence we say thank you for the Lord's steadfast love and faithfulness we say thank you honoring God's holy name and living word we say thank you let us worship God rejoice the Lord is King Join with us in our prayer of adoration and confession. Let's pray. Come Jesus Christ, you are made known in every time and place, revealed to us in different and mysterious ways. We centre ourselves in your presence, seeking to love you more and to serve you in faithfulness. Grant us wisdom as we follow you, that we may know the mystery of your grace, 
in moments of clarity and epiphany and the gift of your presence in the ordinariness of our living. In your presence, Jesus Christ, we center ourselves for worship. In your presence, Jesus Christ, we center ourselves for service. In your presence, Jesus Christ, we center ourselves in holy silence. God of love, just as you name Jesus as your child, your beloved, as you name people like us as your children and call us beloved, and yet we forget. We believe ourselves to be unlovely or unlovable. Help us to hear your words of affirmation and love. Help us to know deep in our being the value of our lives and your call upon us to be fully aware who we are made in your image. God of love, we forget to understand that another is also your child and your beloved. We forget to see the divine spark of your presence in their life and do not treat them with the respect and honour they deserve. Help us to see your love for all people. Help us to honour the lives of others and be attentive to the divine within them. God of love, when our love for others or for ourselves is misguided, distorted or harmful, reveal to us your truth that this is not love at all. Call our actions to account and remind us of your loving ways that are humble and kind, patient and protective. Help us to learn the paths of love that resemble your way in Christ. Turn us to you, loving God, and reform us in your image, and make us true disciples of King Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. Friends, God is forever giving grace upon grace. God's embrace is wide, and God's love knows no bounds. You are a child of God loved and forgiven. Hear Christ's word of grace. Your sins are forgiven and thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Well welcome and it's uh, nice to see you again in this way. And I uh, hope you've been okay uh, during this time of lockdown across Victoria. And hopefully you've been able to carry the message from last week to keep your head up. Um, determined like the psalmist who ended Psalm 27 with the hope of seeing the goodness, the goodness of God all around in the land of the living, it said. And to be strong and to take courage of the God's continuing blessing and presence. This week's decision um, to again have our online worship has been a challenging one and we've tried to keep pace as best we can with all the changes and the uh, constant uh, uncertainty of where things were heading and it's certainly been a very fluid situation. So as you know, some decisions came down um, a bit late in the week and we knew that that was going to be the case. And the details of those decisions, the easing of restrictions in regional Victoria were particularly good news. Um, the details of that were filtering through slowly and the time to communicate to everyone was getting short. So we made the call to stay online for this week. But in the following week, on the 13th of June, we are hoping that that uh, Good news, the continuing easing of restrictions, we may see it even further as things are, the news is better and better. That's what we're hoping for. So the intention at this stage is uh, to have um, a face-to-face -face worship on the 13th of June, although we are preparing for the alternative, of course, if we need it. 
but the intention at this stage is for face-to-face -face worship, and Jonathan Addison will lead us. Now, at this stage, the easing of restrictions in regional Victoria currently permit us to worship face-to-face, -face. Um, but the restrictions are such that we can have about a maximum of 30 people in the worship space and an additional 20 in another part of the building, in the hall, where we can relay sound and um, vision. So we can have a maximum of 50, so we think we can do it. Um, everyone will need to have a mask because masks will be required indoors and of course we want people to sanitise as we've been doing and QR registration is more important than ever before. Um, we've also thought that whilst the restrictions are still there in varying forms that we'll not have morning tea until restrictions ease a little bit further and we are hopeful of that in the short term um, as the news each day is a little bit more encouraging of what's happening and we do pray for Metro Melbourne that continue in the more stringent uh, lockdown place. So that's where we're heading for the next uh, next week um, and I pray that you're not too disappointed that we couldn't have our normal face-to-face -face opportunity this week. It was a hard decision. Today we celebrate around the table of the Lord um, so if you haven't already um, got hold of some bread and wine as you sit there in bed with your coffee or uh, with friends, um, uh, do take the time, perhaps even pause the video right now and dash off and uh, go to the kitchen and, and look for something that can be your bread and wine for today as we make that celebration at the table of the Lord toward the end of our worship. Um, we'll also be exploring a very challenging reading from 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 8. And it's about God's people pleading uh, to Samuel and the Lord for a king just like other nations, a human king. Um, and uh, it's a very interesting exchange and a challenging little reading. And uh, I know that Valerie has put out some resources to the families with children. And in it is the story of this, this Samuel story. And uh, the word that's used in the story is that the people are whining, um, you know, complaining that they want a king. So we'll have a bit of an explore of that. But we also led very capably in prayer by Joan Addison today, who has drawn on that reading and seen in it very much a contemporary reality of our own context. So we'll hear from her and uh, hear our readings. Um, and then reflect together before we come to the table of the Lord. That's the plan, and uh, great that you could be listening in today, and I pray that you stay safe and well, and uh, I'll see you in a little while. So God bless. Our first reading this morning is from Psalm 138, a psalm of thanksgiving and praise. I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods I sing your praise. I bow down toward your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and your faithfulness. For you have exalted your name and your word above everything. On the day I called, you answered me. You increased my strength of soul. All the kings of the earth shall praise your name, O Lord. For they have heard the words of your mouth. They shall sing of the ways of the Lord. For great is the glory of the Lord. For though the Lord is high, he regards the lowly. But the haughty he perceives from far away. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve me against the wrath of my enemies. You stretch out your hand, and your right hand delivers me. The Lord will fulfil his purposes for me. Your steadfast love, O Lord, endures for ever. Do not forsake, forsake the works of your hands.
from 1 Samuel chapter 8 verses 4 to 20. Then all the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Sam Samuel at Ramah and said to him, You are old and your sons do not follow in your ways. Appoint for us then a king to govern us, like the other nations. But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to govern us. Samuel prayed to the Lord, and the Lord said to Samuel, Listen to the voice of the people in all that they say to you. For they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me for being king over them. Just as they have done to me from the day I brought them up out of Egypt to this day, forsaking me and serving other gods, so also they are doing to you. Now listen to their voice only. You shall solemnly warn them and show them the ways of the king who shall reign over them. So Samuel reported all the words of the Lord to the people who were asking for a king. He said, These will be the ways of the king who will reign over you. He will take your sons and appoint them to his chariots to be his horsemen and to run before his chariots. And he will appoint for himself commanders of thousands and commanders of fifties, and some to plough his ground and to reap his harvest, and to make his implements of war and the equipment for his chariots. He will take your daughters to the perfumers and cooks and bakers. He will take the best of your fields and vineyards and olive orchards and give them to his courtiers. He will take one-tenth of your grain and of your vineyards and give it to his officers and his courtiers. He will take your male and female servants and the best of your cattle and donkeys and put them to work. He will take one-tenth of your flocks and you shall be his slaves. And in that day you will cry out because of your king whom you have chosen for yourselves but the Lord will not answer you in that day. But the people refused to listen to the voice of Samuel. They said, no, but we are determined to have a king over us so that we also may be like other nations and that our king may govern us and go out before us and fight our battles. On the 25th of May, in my daily Bible reading, I read 1 Samuel chapter 8, which David, our minister, is preaching on today. I read the message version of this chapter and came in across an amazing list of things the prophet Samuel said would happen if the people turned away from God and wanted a king, just because the countries around them had kings. The people insisted on a king and suffered as a consequence. 
The list is still very pertinent today. Sons and daughters taken as soldiers, people put into forced labour on farms, people put to make weapons of war, forced redistribution of land, labour taxed to support a huge bureaucracy, good work, workers and prize animals taken and used by the powerful, tax burdens so great that the people might as well be slaves. But our God is different. He gives. He does not take to exploit. Let us pray for God's giving heart to be seen by all of us. God in heaven, you are a king who gives and does not take and exploit. We pray that our sons and daughters may not be sent as soldiers to win wars that could have been resolved by discussion and negotiation. We pray that our frontline workers who fight against COVID-19 may not be explo exploited for unpaid extra hours, nor left unprotected due to lack of essential protective equipment. We pray for those who in this very time are forced into labour on farms, in sweatshops, in restaurants with very low wages and bad working conditions. God in heaven, we pray for the managers to comply with employment law and for us as to consumers to pay a little more for our services so that all may live equitably. We pray for those who must make weapons of war. Protect them, we pray. God, we pray for our leaders to put into action weapons of peace and reconciliation. We pray too for your protection on those dealing with the pandemic, that they may be protected from leaders who may want to blame everyone else instead of themselves for their own inaction or incompetence. We pray for those in quarantine places where the air distribution needs to be fixed and where workers are working in a number of jobs just to keep a roof over their head. We pray that the catching of COVID in quarantine may cease. We pray too for those who have unwittingly spread COVID due to their test being negative and then later becoming positive. Protect these people from the finger of blame. We pray for those who have suffered forced land or business acquisitions, land for high transmission lines, land degraded by PFAS or other long lasting chemicals, businesses bought to make a conglomerate bigger. God in heaven, we pray for hard hearts and heads to be changed by you so that the greedy will stop their exploitation. The progress in technology and sustainability can be made without violating the landscape and can be made in a manner that is harmless and equitable. We pray about our tax system, which supports a huge bureaucracy. May the system be changed so that everyone pays tax rates that everyone can afford. We also play, pray for wage reviews so that homes and livelihoods will not be lost due to low wages and too much underemployment. As we have prayed for ourselves and our needs and concerns, we also pray for others. We pray for those in Goma on the border with Rwanda and the DRC who've lost family members, homes and livelihoods due to an earthquake. We pray for those in Palestine trying to recover from the latest Israeli attacks. We pray that money uh, and goods and people will be sent to care for families, repair buildings and recommence jobs. God in heaven, we pray that we might follow your ways in all that we do. May we remember that Jesus came to serve rather than be served. May we remember that Jesus laid down his life for us, that we might have eternal life, the ultimate sacrifice for all people. God, we pray that we may be careful in our church choice of a king or life choices to follow. May we, may we follow your kingship and your life choices, which is one which does not exploit, which serves others, which cares for the environment and which seeks equity for all, regardless of status, race, language or gender. 
and for that we give thanks. Amen. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. From 1 Samuel and uh, chapter 8 the first began like this, our reading. Then all the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah and said to him, You are old and your sons do not follow in your ways. Appoint for us then a king to govern us like other nations. Let's pray. Lord, lead us in our reflections upon this story of Samuel and God's people. May we learn and discover and be shaped as your people by your living word. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, who was the first king of Israel? If you know your Old Testament, the answer is Saul. He's the outcome of this conversation today from 1 Samuel chapter 8. Who was the second king? King David came after Saul. Who was the third king? Solomon. Solomon. The wisdom of Solomon. Who was the fourth king? Now it's getting harder, isn't it? I had to look it up too. And the answer is Jeroboam in Israel and Rehoboam in Judah. You see, the first king came about in about 1050 BC and by about 120 years, those three or four generations of kings, the kingdom was divided into Israel and Judah. Things didn't go so well by the time we got to the third and fourth kings. And indeed, about 350 years after that, the whole nation was in exile. So how does the first king arise? This is the story we have today. And it's a time of crisis. And the people make a request to Samuel. Now, Samuel is the prophet. He's done a fantastic leadership role, but he's getting old and his life is near its end. And there's no clear leadership ahead for the people because Samuel's sons don't quite cut the mustard. And there's the rise of threats of their neighbours, the Palestinians, the uh, Philistines and other neighbours are threatening them. So all the elders come 
and they gather and ask Samuel, appoint a king to lead us like the other nations have. Now this request comes out of fear. They're anxious. They have a bit of lack of faith and trust perhaps. And it's the reality of their fearful circumstances. But also there's this sense that they want to be like other nations. And how often do we act in fear? And how often do we act in a desire to keep up with our neighbours, the other nations, even the neighbour next door? But here in this story is a sense that sometimes we ask for the wrong thing. And it, the thing that rang in my ears when I was considering this is, be careful what you wish for. Be careful what you wish for. Now this saying, we all know it, uh, and it comes from a, a fable of Aesop, Aesop's fables. So it's quite an ancient uh, um, sense to the saying. And it talks about thinking before you ask and consider the implications and perhaps unforeseen consequences of what you wish for. So be careful what you wish for. I did think of a Tim Tam packet that never runs out, but it's not particularly wise either. And I thought of the genie, the story of Aladdin. And Aladdin finds the magic lamp and is given by the genie three wishes. And Aladdin's first wish in the story is to become a prince. And in the crisis that then unfolds from that wish and the trouble he gets himself into, both in terms of his love life and his opposition leadership in the, in the, in the, in the nation, um, Aladdin's second, Aladdin's second wish has to be for the genie to save his life from those that are trying to hurt him. And the third wish that eventually comes towards the end of the story is that Aladdin wishes very nobly for the genie to become free and to become human. Be careful what you wish for is a pertinent saying to today's readings. Sometimes we wish for a big house, but all we find is it gets us into huge mortgage debt. Sometimes I'd like the idea of a nice new car, but I know it brings with it big insurance bills and a high anxiety about where I'd store it because it's an attractive proposition for a thief. Or the times of wishing for a new job only to discover that that brings with it far, far more demands. Less time with family and just generally less time. And therefore stress. And even winning Tass Lotto. I've heard many a time the story that life will change by winning Tass Lotto, but not necessarily for the better. People's attitudes change towards you. Friends start to act a bit weird. Family expect a little bit of a cut of the windfall of winning first division. And financial advisors are very keen to help. And you ultimately long for the quieter days before winning. Be careful what you wish for. Sometimes we ask for that which is not good for us. So the prophet goes at this request, goes to the Lord in prayer and discovers that the Lord sees the request as a sad betrayal that will ultimately harm the people. He says to Samuel, it's not that they have simply rejected you, they have rejected me as their king, says the Lord. There's some real lament and pain in this words of the Lord. It's a bit like a loving parent where the child asks the teenager, more to the point, asks for something, wishes for something, and you say, you think to yourself, I don't think that's going to be good for them. 
And they, they insist, they insist. And ultimately, even as a loving parent, you might acquiesce and let them pursue that wish only to know that it will cause some heartache and struggle and pain. This is the sort of situation we have here for the Lord. And so what the Lord does, ultimately he, the Lord acquiesces to the request of the nation, the elders, but he foreshadows that with a warning of the consequences. And he says the new king, your new king will take from you and there's this re repeated refrain. Here's the reading right here. And in yellow, I've highlighted all the times that the reading says this new king, he will take. He says, these will be the ways of the king who will reign over you. He will take. Ba -ba -da 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 -da. He will take. He will take. He will take. He will take. Six times. He will take. And uh, what I felt during the week is that when I heard Joan's prayer this week, Joan Addison, and her introduction, I thought she said it far better than I could. She said this, if you didn't, didn't pick it up, uh, you'll recall a bit earlier in our service. The people insisted on a king and suffered as a consequence. And she said, this is a very pertinent list today. Sons and daughters taken as soldiers, People put into forced labour on farms. People put to make weapons of war. Forced redistribution of land. Labour taxed to support a huge bureaucracy. Goods and prize animals taken and used by the powerful. Tax burdens so great that the people might as well be slaves. How real is that? These are the warnings that the Lord gives the people. This king will take, says the Lord. And then you will cry out to me for relief. Yet still they persist. No, we want a king to reign over us. This is still true today. In some sense, we reject God as king. And this has always been happening and we will always struggle. You and I and all people will struggle because we think we know safer and better ways to go than simply trusting in God and following the way of Christ. And there's a cost to these decisions for when we take some of these decisions that we might make in our life, there is a cost. And this king that we have adopted as our great wish may take life from us and ultimately lead us into a negative place, like being led back into slavery, back into Egypt. We face decisions all the time. And we do our best, I'm sure, to think through the consequences. Well, at least most of the time, we don't just react with fear or longing for something else, but we think it through. This is the battle going on in this reading. And what happens here that God does not stand in the people's way. They are free to choose and to wrestle with the consequences. God seems to let them stumble into the mess like a parent bowing to the demands of their children even though the parent knows it is likely to be no good outcome. Is this weakness on God's part? Is it simply our persistent demanding? Is there a lesson to be learned? Here's the question. What or who is your king, my king?
who sits on the throne of my life. Jesus came to help us all put a true king back in control of our lives, back on the throne of our lives. And Jesus comes and proves himself to be that gifted king. One who does not take from his people, but one who does not expect his people to serve, rather one who gives his life to his people. He is the good shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep. He gives himself to his people and he comes to serve. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and give his life for others. This king comes as the one who leads his people as a true king. He is the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. The Lord leads me to green pastures beside still waters. He restores my soul. This king, Jesus, comes not to take, but to give. There are so many questions that arise from this reading for us today. A couple that raised for me were, what am I asking from God? What are my wishes before God? Are they hopes and dreams coming from a heart that has Jesus as king? Or are there other kings at play, other kings at play in my life that may actually be causing me damage? And what do we as church, as God's people, do we get so seduced by the world around us, by the nations around us, that we long to be like other organisations, other successful people, that we long to be popular, that we are prepared to abandon God as our King. We are called to be different both individually in our lives and collectively as a community of God's people, the church. We are called to be different. We are called to be ones in whom God is enthroned. I think if this is not true, if we have not taken Jesus as our King, Do we have any good news to share with the world? The good news is this. In Christ, God gives that we might be givers in the world. So I invite you to come today to the table of the Lord. Come to the table of the giving Lord and encounter and remember again the gift of Jesus Christ. And be nourished as a communion of the Holy Spirit, who, in our wishing, may we seek the glory of God. Thank you.
Friends, the peace of the Lord be with you all. As we come to the table of the Lord today, I thought I'd bring it into the home, into our homes, wherever we are, as we hear the invitation of the God who gives, gives into our lives in the person of Jesus Christ. And we recall his invitation to share his very life with us as he invites us to the table to share in the bread and the wine. And we recall that on the night he was betrayed, he was sitting at the table with his friends, just like this table. And as the meal drew to its latter stages, he took some bread and he gave thanks to God and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this whenever you eat it for the remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup. He again gave you thanks. And he gave it to them all, all saying, take and drink. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for everyone for the forgiveness of sins. And do this whenever you drink it for the remembrance of me. The Lord be with you. And let us give thanks to the Lord in prayer. Let's pray. It is right, O oh Lord, that we give you thanks and praise as we gather to your table, your feast of life. For you, O oh God, are the creator of heaven and earth, and you brought forth our world in all its wondrous creation, and you set man and woman at the heart of all that you have done. And you breathed into them the breath of life. You gave them laws to live by so that they would honour you, and one another. And time and again, as they failed and turned from your ways, you spoke to them through the prophets who looked for the day when your law would be written on receptive hearts. When their words went unheeded, you broke into our history in the person of Jesus, who made your love visible in and through all he did and said and was, and through his death and resurrection we have been empowered to reveal that same love through our glad obedience to his command to love one another as he has loved us. And so we praise you with the faithful of every time and place, joining with choirs of angels and the whole creation in the eternal hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And so we pray, O Lord, that you would pour out your Holy Spirit upon us who gather in this strange way. And upon these gifts of bread 
and of wine, that they may be for us the life of Christ, and that as we feed in this sacred meal, we may make his life visible through our love for one another and for the world, the world you so love. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And we join together as one family around the table of the Lord, praying together the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And save us from the time of trial, and lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. And yours be the glory, the power, for ever and ever. Amen. The bread we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. Take the bread that you have and receive it with joy as you eat and remember. And receive now the blood of Christ. Take the wine that you have. Drink and remember. May the body and blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. In our eating, in our drinking, we are sustained as the people of God. We are called as followers of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we are formed as a fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to our God. Let's pray. O gracious God, we give you thanks for satisfying our hungry hearts with this holy meal, shared in the Spirit with Jesus, your Son, our Lord. We again receive from you, O God, the giving God of grace and love, the giving God of forgiveness and healing, the giving God of witness and sending. Strengthened and refreshed, we go from here to continue Christ's work in the world through sincere worship, faithful witness and service to others, shaped by Christ's unconditional love. And this we pray through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you for joining us in worship today. Thank you for gathering around our, well, a virtual table of the Lord. May we recall the simplicity of love that is given to us in Christ. And may we, we wish for the things that will do us good. Wish for the things that will serve our neighbour well and wish for the things that would give honour and glory to God. 
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and forever. Amen. Glory to the King of Kings.